Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another Maya tutorial. This time I am using Maya 2019. I just recently updated. So this is my first tutorial using Maya 2019. So I'm very excited. By the way, this episode is, I like to call my tutorials episodes. This episode is dedicated to my subscribers and my followers. I received a lot of requests for the subject matter, which is the content browser. So this one is for you. Um, all right, the content browser. The content browser is actually located is actually have been around for a long time. So this does not apply just to Maya 2019. This applies to Maya 15, 14, and I think I went even further back. I've seen the content browser, which uh, in the back in the day was called Paint Effects, but uh, it's been in every single version. So this applies to all Mayas. Instead of talking about it, let's go ahead and play with it because the best way to demonstrate the content browser is to actually play with it. Let's take a look at it now. Windows, General Editors, Content Browser. The content browser is a place where you can find a lot of examples of all sorts of stuff. This includes animation. If you wanted to grab some um, FBX motion capture or some, uh, it also has some rigs. If you want to mess around with those, it has effects. So I actually like to look at these cause they're fun. Uh, in particular, my favorite part is the fluids. So fluids can be a little bit of a challenge because of all the attributes that for example, fire has. So this is a great way for you as a power user of Maya to be able to explore this, for example, this flame and see how they did it. So let's look at it now. Flame, I'm gonna drag it into my scene. Please notice that it is an MA file. So that means that it is a Maya ASCII file and it comes with a light. So that's helpful. Thank you, Autodesk. Let's take a look at it, we render it and not much is going on. I'm going to kind of scroll through and you can see the fluids are actually doing something, press play. And now we have some really quick fire. Again, this is a great way of exploring what Maya has to offer when it comes to, okay, it's acting like this because I should be pressing play. I should not be scrolling through, but uh, let's see what happens to Arnold as we try to preview this, but oh, so pretty. Um, I definitely recommend that uh, if you're planning to use this, make sure you really explore what it can provide for you because you can learn a great deal from Autodesk's examples. I'm gonna press stop here for a second and stop here. So this is in a fluid and it has an emitter, but uh, make sure you kind of look at it and have some fun with it. So that's flame and there's a bunch of other example, Let, but let's keep on going forward because there's a ton of things we can look at. Um, let's go take a look at, um, you guys can explore more fluids. I personally like to take a look at hair. Hair is actually a lot of fun to make, but if you want some examples of hair and how it's done, you can just click and drag it into the scene. Now notice that there is no light. So let's create a light, create light, and I'm gonna create a directional light just to make things easy for us. Nothing too complex. And if I render, we now have hair. Look how nice it is too. They did such a great job. I like this one a lot. So again, it's really, um, it's pretty neat what Maya can provide for us. Again, you can take a look at how it's done. It's got the, the hair shape, the system. This is probably where you want to take a look at how it's the collisions and turbulence and all sorts of stuff. It does have a shading right here. You can always change the shading. Uh, let's see, there you go. So now we can change the shading to something a little bit more blue if I wanna go a little, have some fun, but there's a lot of things you can actually play around with. So have some fun. Always, ex uh, I always think that just exploring these type of colors and having some fun with them uh, really makes the piece fascinating and interesting. And I should do a tutorial on hair. I really enjoy making hair. Notice that the roots are now red, it's so much fun. All right, uh, moving on. I know I'm going a little fast, but there's a lot to explore and I encourage you for, for you guys to check out the content browser on your own and just have some fun. All right, uh, it does have some lighting and render, which I've never played, but there's some tune shading that, oh, that's cool, uh, that you might wanna uh, look at. Actually, let's look at it. Let's grab it just for fun. Let's see what happens. Let's see if it renders an Arnold. I was afraid of that. So sometimes these things don't render. And the reason why is because some of these are actually used by the old Maya renderer. So if I press this one instead of the Arnold preview, I have a feeling Maya is crashing on me. So I'm gonna press escape and hopefully, I'm gonna press escape for this one. Escape means stop. I'm gonna choose Maya software and see what we get. There you go. So my, th whatever they did to this 
to get this tune shader works in Maya software, which is the old version of Maya, uh, the old renderer. I think it's really cool actually, but uh, unfortunately it does not work in Arnold Render. So you would probably have to figure out a way to convert these settings into something that Arnold can read. So if I try rendering this now and I'm going to make a uh, selection here, it's it can't do it. <laughs> it doesn't know what to do. So uh, again, it's cool if you want to do something in Maya, uh, but it doesn't work in Arnold. Moving on, my favorite one is in fact paint effects, but let's talk a little bit about how crappy modeling is. Modeling gives you examples of, re oh, actually these are fantastic. The old ones used to be terrible. Let me see if I can find the old ones. This is the one that I've known for like 10 years that I've been using Maya. This is brand new. <laughs> so I'm really excited that in Maya 2019, they have this really pretty models. So the struggle's real here. I can see my computer's thinking really hard. Not sure why I'm not rendering. Might have to start Maya up again. So just give me a second while I do that. All right, so I think Maya got mad at me for uh, insulting its content browser. So I'm sorry, Maya, please be nice to me. Let's go back to Windows, General Editors, Content Browser. All right, so here's our models that I'm pretty sure you can do better, but this is a great base. And then we have our people. Um, I'm not really gonna open this up, but uh, you guys know where it is. I really wanna show you guys this paint effects. Paint effects is something that I've used, uh, especially in my freelance days. So uh, to create really fast and really fun effects. So in this case, it's called paint effects. So this is paint effects under the content browser. And when you go through these folders, you're gonna notice that there's a lot of really cool stuff. So we get fire, but we also have, okay, flesh, flowers, um, food, all sorts of things. So let's take a look at flowers. So flowers, you'll notice that it's a male script. It is not a Maya file. So what we can do is select this um, African lily and actually notice that my icon has changed. If I click on it and I let go, it creates a curve and it also creates what's called a paint effect. If I take a look at my outliner and I'm gonna plug it here, there we go. If you take a look at my outliner, you'll notice that there is no geometry. It's a stroke and a curve. So let's zoom in. I'm gonna just close this for now. If I try to render in Arnold, you're gonna see nothing happens. And of course, if you know anything about Arnold, we need a light. So I'm gonna create a directional light. And now let's render again, and you're gonna notice there's nothing as well. Let's click on alpha. Notice that not, it doesn't even register it. Why? Because it's not geometry. So very similar to what the other examples, you have to render it out with the with Maya software. So click on this little film clapper. Instead of using Arnold, use Maya software and then press render. And now you have some really cute flowers. Let's get a little closer. Not too shabby. But how can we get this to work? Well, I'm gonna show you a trick. Under modify, convert, there's something called paint effects to polygons. So if I click on the options, I like to say quad output because I like quads and then convert. Now, unfortunately, what's also going to happen, well, when we render it out, it still works great in Maya software, but let's see what happens when we go into Arnold. It's a little dark, but it works. Now, you're more than welcome to go in here and actually convert the um, the shader, because right now it's using a fong and it's connected to this ramp. And I believe it doesn't look like it has any transparencies, which is great. So what we can do is convert this into a AI standard surface. It's going to lose its connection. So that's where the hyper shade is going to help us out. And we're going to go under texture. Here's the ramp. Middle mouse and drag that puppy into color. And now we have our color back. Let's find out. Ta-da, so beautiful. Let's take a look at this one. This one is using a shader. It's a green shader. Again, it's using a fong. We can convert this into a AI standard surface. Again, I'm gonna be using the hypershade. This is the ramp materials, textures. Drag that to color and see what we get. So now we're getting a nicer effect. Okay, this guy. Let's do the same thing. It's a little bit different though, because, all right, it's using color and transparency. The color is the ramp. 
it's giving us some weird sample. I'm not even sure what that means. So probably I'm going to break it. And then we also have our transparency, which is this plant. So just to make sure, know what I'm doing, just want to double check to make sure the color is connected to. Okay, so I'm going to go to my materials. I'm going to right click and graph the network. This is going to help me. And I'm closing this because it's just on my way. This is going to help me see how things are connected. So I've got a ramp two. So I got to keep that in mind because ramp two is right here. Then I got a side leaf RGB. So it must be this little guy right here. And they're connected to the color and a transparency. So what does that mean? Well, that means that I can convert this into, uh, I can take this information and plug it in. So I'm going to delete this just because I'm not sure what's, I'm going to convert this into an AI standard surface. Still here, awesome. Get this. This is my color, so I'm going to plug it in. Wrong one. Looks like I've never used Maya before. <laughs> uh, all right, let's try that again. I'm going to middle mouse and drag, ramp two to color. And so far, so good. Let's go to geometry. I'm going to grab this RGB thing and put it in opacity. And, um, and then I'm going to go to my leaf here. They're all the same piece, so I'm going to go under Arnold and turn on that, and let's see what we get. All right, it worked. Yay! So very quickly, we can get some really nice plants. So we might need to go in and um, if you want them to be separated, for example, you might actually have to go in and separate them. But uh, just be warning, just to warn you, every single piece is going to need that has transparency. You need to turn off a pig. So let's go ahead and uh, separate and see if that does anything. Hopefully, it does not crash Maya because I've, oh, okay, that worked out. You just never know, right? Still thinking. Okay, here we go. Just want to make sure it's not rendering. I'm going to stop this. And let's see. Okay, great. I'm going to zoom in. So now we can grab these guys and either you guys can either combine them or you can group them together. I'm going to group them, modify, center pivot, and then you can start bringing them together to get a little bundle, bundle of joy. I just click on the letter G. So very quickly I can create, uh, letter G just means that I'm, I'm doing the last command which was center pivot. So it just makes things a little easier. G. G. So imagine if you had to model all of these, texture every single one of them, uh, the content browser could save you a lot of time. Now, everything comes with a, be careful, um, the content browser is used, has like it's not a hidden secret. A lot of people in the industry use this. So they may see it as a way that it's like a cheap way of getting, of not creating something. So just be careful because when you are trying to create like something unique, you definitely need to model this stuff. However, if this is an asset that's not gonna be seen, it's gonna be in the background, you can just go ahead and plug it in. You're not gonna take the time to model texture and everything if it's not really going to be a key part of your scene. Here comes the plus side. Um, as you guys know, my name is Monica and my website's academicphoenixplus.com and I always like to throw in a little plus. So I'm going to show you not only the content browser, but I also want to show you AI Jitter just to kind of break up this color a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the Hypershade. Take a look at AI color jitter. So AI color jitter just means that it's going to break up the colors. Let's go ahead and grab the output color and put it in the inputs. And then we're going to grab the output color of this one and put it in the base color. So nothing has changed. And then the magic happens is in the Arnold renderer. Usually if you mess around with the hue, sometimes you get an effect. Uh, I'm going to close this really fast and then open it up again just because I want to make sure everything got 
uh, refreshed. Then I'm going to make a little selection here just to make life easier. So the big one is actually, I believe it's called object. And if I change the hue of the object, you're going to start seeing that it starts impacting the color. So it, it makes it a little bit more unique. So instead of having the same flat colors, you can actually start breaking up the colors a little bit. And right away, we're getting a nice uh, feel that it looks a little bit more realistic than just a flat image. You can increase the saturation if you guys want to go crazy. You can also make them brighter if you thought, you know, you want to make them glow. But uh, the point of this one is that you can really go pretty extensive with your color variations. But it, you just need a little bit. And just having that little bit breaks up the color and that makes it look much more realistic. So that is called AI Jitter. Definitely check it out. I have a video tutorial about it, which goes a little bit more in depth. But this is a really fast way of grabbing not only the content browser, but also converting it into an object that Arnold can take, can understand, then adding an AI color jitter, you get something really cool like this. So for me, working in the industry as a freelancer, I'd I'll grab AI jitter and put it on all these guys too, just to break up the color a little bit more. Um, but this tutorial has gone long enough. I hope that was really helpful. Again, this is under Windows General Editor's Content Browser. There's so many things in here. You're going to have so much fun uh, working with it. Um, I definitely recommend to check it out, play around. Um, you can create beads. You can do all sorts of wild things. So thank you again for listening. I really appreciate your support. If you want to see more of these, please subscribe. Also go to my website at academicphoenixplus.com and sign up for my newsletter. I have a lot of free downloads for you to play around with and follow along. Not this particular tutorial because everything's content browser, but for or I have over 100 tutorials for you guys and uh, you can follow along. Um, thank you again. I really appreciate everything and and I will see you next time.